everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com, and welcome to the Daily Futures Market Outlook, where we take a look at our favorite futures markets and formulate an attack plan for tomorrow's trading. Now, when we're looking at tomorrow, we're talking about the 15th going into Thursday, and that is also the day after FOMC. Now, the day after FOMC can be a little bit of a weird one. Obviously, today, uh, we had FOMC along with a bunch of other stuff, crude oil inventories, and I mean, it, it seems like the markets are kind of all or nothing. It, it's either we get no news and really slow movement, or we get all of the news. And uh, well, today was the one on the uh, on the all of the news side of things, movement all over the place. Uh, now, before we jump on in, as always, make sure to swing it over to Slingshot Futures, scroll down, and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. That's going to let you sign your email up so that we can send you a message every single time one of these videos comes out. Along with that, in that email, we're going to talk about all kinds of different stuff, from stocks, currencies, futures, cryptocurrencies, you name it. If it moves and we can trade it, it's probably in that newsletter at some point. So a great newsletter to get your hands on. Also at the bottom of the page, in the blog section, we do two different posts every day. In the morning, right before we open up the live trader, we load up the live trader morning prep levels, and those are gonna be the major levels of support and resistance for that day. And that's going to be where we can kind of pick apart the markets and see where we're really getting a lot of uh, major support and resistance that we can use for that day. And then of course, in the afternoon session, we have the market psychology video or a trade of the day video where we go over a trade that we took in the room or we cover the psychology of a specific move of interest. Uh, now, if you haven't done so already, click on the live trading room subscription and trial info and sit down with us and you can sign up for a one day trial. Uh, so you can sit down with us and see what we're all about. You can sit through a, a, a morning of trading, a day like today, you get a lot of movement and other days you don't get a whole lot. But either way, it's a way that you can see what we're doing every day, how we're taking our trades and basically follow along with us to see if we're a good fit. Uh, as always, if you do enjoy the live trading room, you can always sign up with a weekly or monthly subscription. And of course, if you join us a full-fledged VIP member, you get the live trade room as part of the package. Now, taking a look at the Euro, uh, we obviously had some pretty bullish movement on the 8.30 news, and that had good continuation. It kept going up and up and up and up and up. And then the 1400 FOMC news came out and it took it all right back. Every ounce of bullishness that we had this morning, it drove all the way back down and even made a new low of the day. So a very aggressive bear turn down that we had here. Uh, and really the sellers are looking to attempt to continue, but in the bigger picture, we now have a humongous range that we are looking at the uh, kind of the bottom of. Now, if we zoom out a little bit, we can see the overall bias. There really isn't one either. And even if we bump out to a faster time frame like a 60 minute we're still stuck in this same area they can't seem to get through the highs up here uh, and we can't really seem to get through the lows down here and we in today with the FOMC we cycled off of the highs almost straight down to the lows uh, save this little kind of poke that we had down here one thing that does stand out possible uh, as a channel low down here now this may just be one humongous wedge depending on how the market wants to treat it but we haven't had that big pullback down to that major support and until we get that big pullback we're looking at this in terms of a range looking to buy low sell high buying low that is at 12020 uh, and then if we do get a little bit of a rally up, I have to assume that given this massive failure off the top, the seller's going to want to give it one more shot for at least some bouncing, maybe a little bit of a scalp, maybe a bigger move than that. But at 12,460, uh, 12,540, 12,750, and all the way up at the 12,965. That area is where we're going to be looking for possible selling opportunities on the way back down to see if they want to try to get one more leg down in the face of this massive bull failure. Over on gold, gold also with a very strong bullish rally higher. We went sideways for a little while and then the news came out. We made a quick new high and then immediately dumped down to a new low and gave everything up that they had in terms of progress in the morning session. And now we're actually looking at a pretty bearish type of day. Uh, now we opened up right over here and we're going to be closing somewhere down here. And that's going to leave a monster wick on the highs and a very small wick on the bottom with a bare body. That is a very bearish type of day candle. And we are looking for a little more continuation. We have downside objectives down at 1255.4 that are still wide open and the sellers are looking to get that meat on the bone, right? They wanna drive the market down, finish that objective off and really catch that full move. We have had most of it. Now it's just a matter of seeing if they wanna finish the total move off at 55.4. 
Along the way, if we can get a little bit of a correction, we do have this major swing that we broke underneath. A lot of times when we break through a big level like that, markets love to come back and retest it. And that also happens to coincide on weekly resistance at 1266.7. So everything kind of stacking up in the same place there. Possible little kill zone area there at 66.7. If we do get a larger correction though, 71.5, 74.6, 78.7, and then of course the high of that news move at 84.2 doubt we're going to get that but all of those areas are areas of interest for at least a short-term bounce if not something a little bit larger uh, so overall looking bear side and looking for a good correction to sell into to finish off that bear objective at 55.4 over on crude oil, another wide open bear objective at 44.21. We have yet to complete that move lower, and we had a lot of bearishness on the inventories today. Uh, we had a little bit of a split. The API was forecasting a positive number. The forecast for today was looking at a negative number. We came out kind of in the middle as a negative, and the market seems to have taken that as a bear tone, strangely enough. Uh, fundamentally speaking, that should be bullish. Uh, but with that split in the, uh, in the inventories versus the API, may have caught some folks off guard and we took a big slam to the downside uh, and again we have that open objective down to 44.21 that sellers can still look to achieve now this does appear to be somewhat of a big breakdown into a flag a pretty obvious flag right here uh, so with that flag if we can get a break through it a pop back up looking for a sell to drive the market down to 44.21 and finish that objective off huge amount of bearishness now it's just a matter of whether or not the sellers want to come in now or if they want to wait a little bit longer uh, for some of that breakout pullback action and then finally the S&P well the S&P for the most part still kind of a range even after FOMC we're gonna be opening up and closing pretty much smack on top of one another it had a big move up and then a bigger move down and they gave all of it back at the end of the day and we are going to be left with a very ugly looking daily candle mostly bullish but it does have a bare body right most of the wick is at the bottom but it is still closing bearish and well for the most part we're still in a range we haven't really left if we zoom out we can see we're in the same range we were talking about yesterday how we were cycling off of the lows of that range and if the sellers don't show up we could cycle our way all the way back up to the highs and that is exactly what happened bounced off the highs and now we are working our way back down again uh, so not really much of a directional bias on the bigger time frame if we go out to maybe a 60 minute chart we can see that well we're still not really a whole lot going on mostly an expanding megaphone but we are getting weaker and a lot of times that's a sign that we're going to start turning into more of a range and we can already see that range working out we are at the low of that range so we are looking to buy down here uh, zooming into a five minute time frame obviously that buying pressure has already began uh, but looking for a pullback area 24 31 and a half 30 and a quarter to 30 even uh, and then 28 and a quarter are all buying potential areas to buy off of the lows of the range and if it does want to continue back up the last sign of defense for the sellers is going to be at 37 half if that starts breaking then we could very easily find ourselves rallying back up to new highs once again so a little bit of a mixed bag across the board here but you know you kind of expect to see a little bit of weirdness when you're talking about FOMC uh, now looking at the overall news for tomorrow we do have a decent amount of news but a lot of it isn't for the US uh, the UK is actually the one taking the spotlight for tomorrow at 4 30 in the morning in Eastern time we have the retail sales uh, forecasted for negative 0.8 percent out of the UK at 7 o'clock for the UK, once again, the Bank of England interest rate decisions forecasted at 0.25%. That is also the previous. Uh, and then at 7 o'clock as well, they have the Bank of England MPC meeting minutes. So kind of like their version of the FOMC. Uh, but outside of that, if you're trading anything in the UK, it's going to be a pretty big deal. Otherwise, for the US session, it's going to be a little bit quiet. We have news at 8.30 in the US for the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index forecasted at 24. The previous was 38.8, but that's really it. Going into the afternoon session for the U.S. at 1600 out of the U.K., once again, we have the Bank of England Governor Carney speaking, and then tentatively throughout the day out of Japan, we have the Bank of Japan monetary policy statements. Uh, so plenty of stuff going on tomorrow, just not much for the U.S. So we may have another quiet one on our hands. Again, it seems to be all or nothing lately in these markets of ours, and tomorrow it may be the nothing side of things. We had our all today. Tomorrow might be nothing. We'll have to wait and see. And like we always say, uh, just be as prepared as possible. Make the plan. Trade the plan follow those rules and you'll be a-okay until next time we'll see y'all then